Hi! In a pretty rare move, I'm making a video from home because this is a newsworthy thing, so I'm not in front of the set, and uh, Reed is on the couch sleeping away back there. So, uh, yeah, also I'm doing laundry, so apologies for the washing machine noises in the back. Um, I want to make a video talking about the news that GM and now Ford have announced they will well, no, Ford and now GM have announced that they're going to switch to the Tesla charging connector uh, because a whole bunch of people are asking for my thoughts on that. So I have this habit in my script writing and videos in general that I'm actively working on trying to break, and that habit is burying the lead. So uh, I'm going to actively not do that here and just start out by saying that I am personally annoyed <laughs> with this news, um, but only for ego reasons. There's some information regarding what Tesla is doing, which I have from a source that I don't have permission to name. Uh, if they show up in the comments, I will pin the comment or acknowledge it in some other way. So recognize that some of this is like not exactly insider information, but a bit speculative. I haven't seen it covered in this way yet. Um, but if what if what I believe is happening is happening, this isn't a big deal. And I just saw an article from, uh, I think it was, it was either, I think it was Clean Technica. Um, format war is the wrong uh, terminology for this situation because of adapters. Uh, and actually they use the beta and VHS format war, which is a great example, um, as an example. Because if you had a beta VCR, you could not use a VHS tape in that VCR. It was not possible. There were never adapters to do that because the signals on the tape are completely different. But in this new landscape, there are going to be adapters between the Tesla port, which is now called NAX, and that used to annoy me so much, but if what they're doing is what they're doing, then I actually think that's, a, that's an okay name for it. Um, because there will be adapters, I'm not going to be stuck with my car having CCS if more NACs chargers show up in the world and or if this doesn't have a big effect, which I, I don't think is happening. I think this is going to have major ripple effects throughout the industry. But if for some reason there are a ton of CCS chargers and you have a NACs car, well, you're going to be able to use an adapter, which many Tesla drivers already can do. Um, but anyway, because those adapters exist and will continue to exist, it's not as if somebody who, nobody will have backed the wrong horse. That's not going to happen in this situation because when we get right down to it, all it is is a difference in the connector. So I have my Tesla tap here uh, to illustrate, and by the way, this is an adapter. This is an adapter that already exists. This does not work for uh, DC fast charging. It is meant to use for Tesla destination chargers. So this is the J1772 port. This is what had been the North American standard until, well, it still is, but we'll see what happens. This only has five pins because we don't have three-phase charging, or not three-phase charging, we don't have three-phase power in domestic environments here in the US. That's just not a thing. So these pins are, the big three are ground, line one, and line two slash neutral. So on 120 volt circuits, that's gonna be neutral. And on 240 volts, that's gonna be line two. And then we have two communication pins. So we got five pins in total, the, the regular three prong pins for AC power and two communication pins. On the Tesla connector, we have the same exact thing. So we have uh, these three pins down here, the middle one is ground, and then we have communication and uh, they're both, uh, one's the proximity pilot, one is the control pilot, I think. I never get that right in my head. But then the big AC pins are huge. Because what Tesla decided to do, knowing that we don't have three-phase power in the home, so this connector is never going to get support for three-phase, there's just no point, they use the same two pins for both AC and DC. I will readily admit that this connector is more elegant than the J1 or CCS1, which is this thing with two big honking DC pins sitting below. I will not go on my tangent yet. I'm going to get there. Because I will admit this is a better connector, but my whole contention, the reason why I get snarky and angry about Tesla fans is because of the reality distortion field around everything Tesla does. Um, I believe this is a better connector, but I don't think it's better enough to really matter. And that's another reason why I'm a little bit... Because, like, look at this, okay? 
This and this are pretty much the same size. This just has an external latch, which I realize is not great, and I have uh, my own concerns about that, but the actual physical size of the connector is very, very similar. The only uh, real accessibility, or not accessibility, that's not quite the, not quite the right word, but the, the real good usability advantage to this is that the shape is somewhat self-aligning, and that J1772, you have this keying element here, so you do need to make sure that you're holding this straight or it won't go into the car. Again, I don't think that's much of a big deal, and when you get when you get used to it, like, I'm not even really looking at the charge port in my car anymore when I plug it in because I know the angle I need to hold it. It's muscle memory. You all know what muscle memory is. You get that over time. But anyway, I said I wasn't going to go on that tangent, and here I did going on that tangent. So, again, I will readily admit that this connector is a more pleasant connector than J1772, and the way that they shared the AC and DC pins is quite elegant. I do have some technical reservations about that. It just seems a little bit risky to me to allow... It requires extra switching components in the car, but my understanding is that's been well well sorted, and obviously it has been because Teslas don't blow up every time you plug the charger in because they're smarter than that. So whether or not this plug was going to become the standard was less of a concern for mine because I think it was a worse plug or anything like that, because it's not. It's clearly not. My bigger concern was, up until quite recently, Tesla's this was proprietary, and Tesla's network was completely closed. And part of what makes it proprietary, or what made it proprietary, was the signaling that Tesla uses to communicate to the car. They've always used two flavors. When you're on a destination charger, this speaks CCS, which is the reason why uh, this adapter exists. I can plug my car into a destination charger. However, it's not, it's not straight. Uh, so did I say speak CCS? I'm sorry. This charger on AC chargers speaks J1772. So the signal on the control and proximity pilot is the same. However, what I was going to say is it's not exactly the same because every time I use this adapter, which has been a grand total of twice because I really can only use this at a hotel. I can charge at home. Um, so if I'm on a road trip and I'm at a hotel that has Tesla charging, that's why I have this adapter. But every time that I use it, if I just plug the Tesla plug into here and then plug into my car, um, even after waiting 30 seconds, which I think is what this says to do, it doesn't work. I actually need to turn my car, after it's plugged in, I need to turn my car on, then turn it off, and then it works. As a matter of fact, that little voice on my car that says charging started, when you first plug this in, there's like a delay, and then it says charging intercepted, which is a weird terminology. But then you go into the car, turn it on, turn it off, and it starts charging okay. So the Tesla, the Tesla port has always spoken J1772 for AC. But for DC fast charging, Tesla used a proprietary communication system, and CCS used... This is, my one, this is my one genuine criticism of CCS. The communication scheme that CCS uses is bonkers and overcomplicated and very much like, why did they do that? They use power line communication, which is a very weird protocol. But regardless, that was different between Tesla and CCS. So there have never been adapters until quite recently for DC fast charging um, because Tesla stations cannot talk to CCS cars. But this is why I'm not super bothered. We probably have Europe to thank for this, but because Europe actually legislated, every car has to use CCS. And CCS2 is a different physical connector compared to CCS1, but the protocols are largely similar from what I understand. Tesla has to build their cars to speak CCS. So going forward, the intention appears to be that Tesla superchargers are going to natively speak CCS through these pins. Because the thing is, the control pilot and proximity pins on CCS are the same uh, signaling pins used for, um, sorry, again, it's confusing. If nothing else, this is one reason why this is better. Um, the These two pins, I should really show this side, these two pins, the control pilot and proximity pilot, the same two pins are used for AC and DC charging communication. And uh, they always have been. And that's part of why CCS uses the PLC communications. My understanding was they went, anyway, we don't need to get into that. The 
because the communications were different, it would be, even if you had a passive adapter, you could not get a Tesla charger to talk to a CCS car. And that's why they started rolling out the magic dock to do a test because those chargers can speak CCS through the adapter, but the rest of their chargers can't. Because Tesla has to support CCS on cars in Europe, they might as well support CCS on cars everywhere. And so the supercharging hardware here in North America is going to start being able to speak CCS through their connector. So that means my car with its J1772 slash CCS combo port will, with the right adapter, at some point be able to talk to Tesla chargers. Now, the wrinkle here is that, from my understanding, and this makes total sense, Ford and GM are signing an agreement with Tesla. So it's not as if I'm going to be able to roll up to a Tesla charger in my Hyundai with that adapter yet. I fully expect that's probably going to be possible. And honestly, the fact that Tesla wants to open up their charging network to more and more people, it does, it is interesting to me as far as like, why now? Um, what might be the reasoning for it? But regardless, if, um, if what's happening, if what I think is happening is what's happening, then I was super annoyed when Tesla was like, we're going to start calling this NAX, the North American Charging Standard. I was like, you, you people, because it's not a standard. This is a standard. This is Tesla's own proprietary thing. However, because Tesla has purportedly open sourced this, I don't know the details on that, but supposedly they've completely open sourced it. And if it starts speaking CCS going forward, then I will actually be fine calling this the North American charging standard. So fine, have it your way, Tesla. But uh, if that's what happens, then truly we're kind of good. The only people who are screwed are uh, Leaf drivers because it has Chatamo. Nissan, what are you doing? You should have switched the Leaf to CCS years ago. Anyway, um, if, if what seems to be happening is happening, Tesla chargers are going to start speaking CCS. So however they want to do it, with an adapter, I will be able to charge my car. And anybody with a CCS car will be able to charge their car with an adapter. And if the industry moves to this port and CCS1 completely goes away, I have the option to either keep using that adapter or what's very likely going to be the case for Ford and GM at least, they'll probably offer a kit to convert their CCS cars to NAX. Because again, with this new change, this is just a physical connection. The signaling, like all you gotta do is wire this up correctly to the car and then boom, you've switched the charging port. It is, it's a little bit more complicated because of the whole AC-DC switching thing. You can't just change the port on a CCS car uh, because the AC pins go to a different place compared to the DC pins. So that might not be easier. It's easier said than done, but um, I fully, ex I guess I should say I fully expect because that angle, but it is likely through either another module or something that you can switch your car to NAX. But even if you can't, you get an adapter, you'll be able to use any charger. It's gonna be annoying, of course, but it's not the end of the world. Now understand that my positive outlook here is with that assumption in mind, if this port from Tesla is going to start using CCS communications and every CCS car that's currently out there will be able to talk with any charger that uses this connection, we're fine. There's really no reason to be upset about this. And if the industry converges onto this port because it is sleeker and easier to use, cool. I will have a little bit of egg on my face because I didn't think this was going to happen, but that's it. The, the, rest, the rest of the people, the rest of the driving public can rest assured that they're not going to be stranded. They're not going to have backed the wrong horse. They will either just need to carry a relatively small adapter with them when they travel, possibly two adapters, because you might want this for AC charging as well. Or down the road, they will be able to retrofit their car with a different connector if we do definitely settle on the NAX charger rather than CCS1. Now, the future is not 
certain yet. Uh, Ford and GM both announcing that they're switching to this, I think is the death knell of CCS, but it's not certain yet because Volkswagen may not want to switch. Um, though I don't know. I really don't know. It, the, the whole, the way they own Electrify America, even though it's not quite, I don't know, the ownership there, but their stake in Electrify America may make them want to stick with CCS. Uh, that's kind of a weird move because their network sucks. <laughs> and sorry, but it does. Um, and that's another thing to talk about here. But uh, it, CCS may not be dead yet, but with Ford and GM saying, fine, we're just going to throw in the towel and use it, uh, that could very well be the case. What's also going to be very interesting, and this is, again, this is why the timing is really weird to me. Because of the NEVI funding and all of the stuff that we've been seeing, there's been tons of information or, or tons of new developments in CCS1 chargers. And, uh, you know, if you, fought, if you follow Kyle of Out of Spec Reviews, he's gone to different events and showing all this different charging hardware that's showing up. And they've all been investing in CCS. And so when I first heard about Ford announce, Ford's announcement, I was thinking to myself, this is very weird timing. Because yes, currently the CCS networks suck and Tesla's supercharger network is much more reliable. However, Tesla's supercharger network is getting close to capacity in many different locations. And there's all this money on the table for CCS to get expanded. So I thought Ford's timing was very weird here. Um, and then with GM saying the same thing, well, you know, now it's more obvious that like, okay, there, there probably have been some, because like nothing happens that fast in big businesses like this. There's probably been some discussions happening for a long time. But the people who are really going to be screwed by this are like uh, Huber Schooner, the people who make the cables and the connectors, um, assuming we all move to Nax. Now, they can make Nax connectors. Uh, and to be quite honest, I don't like the cables on the, on the Electrify America stations. It's not so much the cables. For what they do seem needlessly bulky. But the handle, I, I really dislike the Huber Schooner handle. They tried too hard to make it look sleek. It's, it obscures the port, so it's harder to align it. Like, it, it visibly obscures the port. The button to release the latch, I really dislike. I just don't like that connector, and it bugs me so much that that's the most common one out there. Again, that leans into the whole people think that CCS is so awful. Maybe if you tried a better connector, it wouldn't, or a better handle, you wouldn't think it that, that it's so bad, but anyway. Um, so th they're going to be interesting to see how that goes. So now I want to move to like the, the bugbears of mine. So I'm going to talk, this is much less to do. Again, I'm going to say it. You will hear me say it. I'm admitting it. I'm there. My position has never been that I think this connector is worse than CCS. I was skeptical for a very long time. And honestly, I still have some bits of doubt in my head that these pins can truly do a thousand amps, but Tesla says they can. And we do know they're doing 625 in the wild right now. So not for long, but they are doing it. Uh, so anyway, my position has never been, this is a worse port because no, no sane person would tell you that CCS1 is a better experience than this. However, there's this reality distortion field that happens around everything that Tesla does. And this is honestly why I get snarky and why I get bothered by Tesla, because they take up so much oxygen and they do, they take up so much oxygen that the weird idiosyncratic ways that they choose to do things get seen as the gold standard by Tesla drivers. And they're often, they often, um, start expecting things which I think the general public really does not care about. So to give an example, um, I just I mentioned Kyle Connor of Out of Spec Reviews. One thing that I really disagree with him on is the importance of plug to charge and I or plug and charge. And I disagree with virtually every person who thinks that a charging network needs to, or and a car needs to support plug and charge. Right now, Tesla's system is so seamless because they control everything. They can make the car talk to the charger in a very deep way. They can make the car handle billing because you basically have an iPad in there. Everything is their own system. The CCS networks, 
have copied the worst part of Tesla, which was there's no freaking payment terminal on the chargers. So the CCS networks in large part have resorted to these wonky apps and everyone hates the apps. Everyone hates the apps. Everyone hates that you have to sign up for a membership or get the little RFID card. No one wants that. Nobody is saying that Tesla's system is worse than that. Everybody knows that Tesla's system is better because it solves that problem. I'm going to re-record that because I had some profanity. So yes, everybody knows that Tesla's system is great and seamless and it's much better than fumbling around with apps or fobs or anything like that. But I don't think that should be the standard. The standard should be you walk up to a charger and pay with your credit card or Apple Pay or contactless or whatever. Just accept normal payments. I don't want to have to sign up for some service provider's um, thing because, you know, another thing from my perspective is if plug to charge is going to be a thing, we want there to be competition between different charging providers, right? That's obviously a thing that we want because again, going back to like the whole thing why I've been angsty about Tesla having a monopoly position here is nobody wants there to be one charging provider. We want there to be a whole bunch. So there's competition and yada, yada, yada. So to have plug to charge become a real thing in a world where there is that competition, there need to be data sharing agreements between all those different partners or else you're going to have to sign up for individual uh, accounts with all these different things. Whereas we've had this payment system for, oh, I don't know, 70 years with credit cards. When was the first credit card? It was a diner's club. I know that first credit card and is the chunky thing with the embossed numbers why did i think first credit card would be a usable google search question when was the first credit card when was 1950 it was about right anyway so We've had payment sorted forever. Tesla just did something weird in large part to be cost cutting and make the, you know, it's not just cost cutting, it makes the sites more reliable, there's less stuff to break. But Tesla's weird thing is mainly to, or, or Tesla's sleek, seamless system is mainly because they're being weird and don't have freaking card payment terminals on their machines. So that's, that's one of those things where it's just like, yes, if you have a Tesla, you can plug in and expect it to work. And when you compare it to Electrify America, where you go up to the station, half the time the app is being wonky. Uh, I did a road trip in April. Every single time I stopped to charge, I needed to sign out of the app and sign back in again because something was being wonky. Um, everyone knows that Tesla's system where you can just plug in and walk away is better than that. But honestly, I would rather have it be that I'm not signing up for anything. I'm just rolling up to wherever I happen to be, swiping my card and starting charging. And another issue with plug to charge or plug and charge or whatever other thing that uses a central server to authenticate the uh, payment, uh, servers go down sometimes. And uh, I believe that has happened a few times in Tesla's history where people couldn't charge at superchargers because of network issues. Um, now, of course, like credit card processors also have network issues. So it's not like, oh, you know, it's not like that would be a perfect solution. But it's another reason why it's just like I don't agree with making plug to charge some sort of app thing you need to have. It solves a problem that the other networks have because they use terrible ways to get around not having a payment terminal on the charger. Um, so I, if there's one thing that, if there's one good that comes out of the Nevi funding, it's forcing chargers to have some way to just pay with a credit card. Um, yeah, sorry, that's getting a little bit ranty, but that's the reality distortion field around Tesla. That's the sort of thing that really grinds my gears is that nobody, the general public does not care about that. You, as a Tesla driver, are convinced that this is the best and that the general public wants what you have. But honestly, I'm telling you, that's not true. You guys just don't, you guys look at Electrify America and you look at the alternatives right now and rightfully recognize they stink. That doesn't mean that Tesla has the best answer. That's usually been my, my whole bugbear on the whole thing. Which leads me to the thing about CCS1. Um, the one 
angle that I've been somewhat receptive to about the, the badness of CCS1 is that it's difficult to use from an accessibility perspective. However, there's two things that make that seem kind of like a, a nitpick to me. Uh, first of all, gas, gas stations have attendance for people with disabilities uh, because, again, the reality distortion field thing, I've probably said that a thousand times. Most people's point of comparison between CCS and something else is a gas pump. And gas pumps, they're not elegant. No one has ever held the thing and been like, ooh. No, they're ugly, horrible, clunky things. And people with mobility issues have just as much of a problem dealing with a gas pump as they would any car charger. So that angle to me has always been a little bit weird because again we're in this situation where right now charging stations are completely unattended and it's up to you to get out and plug your car in but that's the new frontier of charging stations for gas stations there have been attendants so like that's a solvable problem we can disagree on whether or not that solution is tenable because maybe it's a good thing that charging stations are mostly unattended who knows but the other thing is for people who think that ccs1 is genuinely difficult to use i just don't agree because the thing is, again, it's muscle memory. You get used to how you need to align the plug. And every time that I thought that I've been struggling to unplug the connector, it's because I was being a dum-dum and my car had not released the connector yet. Because when you hit stop on the charger, there's a substan the charger stops immediately, but my car doesn't unlock for like 15 seconds. And it took me an uh, embarrassingly long time to realize that and wait for the second click. Uh, so I've been fighting with it while it's still locked to the car. Once it's actually released, it slides right out. It slides in and out pretty okay. The problem has always been the bulk of the cable, which that's not necessarily tied to the connector. So again, I've never, I have never been that swayed by, oh, the Tesla connector is so much easier to use. Yes, it's easier to use, but is it easier enough to actually matter? I don't know. And that's, that's the key thing. What actually matters here? Everybody who's in the Tesla ecosystem is going to think that t Tesla's uh, methods and designs are always the best, just as how, you know, you still have people in the Apple community defending the lightning connector. I, and like, yeah, it's got some very, very niche benefits, but the fact that it's still the, the current gen iPhones can only transfer with USB 2 speeds over the cable, right? I don't think that's changed yet. So it's, it's stuff like that. Like, you have to realize what actually matters to people. And the, the physical sleekness of the connector to me has always been like, no one actually cares. Tesla drivers would care if they lost their sleek connector, and that's why they're loud about it. But the vast majority of drivers currently, their point of comparison is a gas pump. It's not sleek, it's smelly, it's a lot more dangerous. And it's not any easier to handle than a CCS plug, at least from my perspective. Uh, the other fun thing with the Tesla reality distortion field is, you know, as Tesla is opening up their supercharger network in certain locations, Tesla decided every one of their cars is going to have the charge port on the rear driver's side, which honestly, why did they choose the driver's side? Curb street parking is a thing. I've heard people say, well, it's convenient as a driver. You just get out, walk to the back, plug in the car. Okay, but again, curbside parking, if we're gonna have on-street charging, you don't want the cord on the traffic side. I don't know why they chose that. But regardless, they, they standardized the position of the charge port. So all their charges have these dinky little cords because you're expected to back in and it just works with your Tesla ca uh, car. But like the rest of the industry has never uh, committed to a location for the charge door to be. and. The Tesla reality distortion field leads a lot of Tesla people to say, well, they should just standardize where they're going to put the charge port, which to me just feels so ridiculous because, yes, in theory, that's something we could do. But when you actually like dig a little bit deeper, you'll realize, think of like the Ford Lightning. That's a pickup truck. You might remove the bed from the pickup truck. Truck, So you're not going to want to put the charge port back there. There's going to be reasons to have the charge port in different locations and 
Tesla set this problem up for themselves that uh, their charging network is really only suited to charge Tesla cars. It's just, it is absolutely astonishing to me that people genuinely believe, oh, this is a problem of the rest of the industry for not just putting their charge port in the same location and not Tesla by doing this didn't think a little bit further ahead for other scenarios because even just pull through charging, they don't have pull through charging in almost all of their uh, locations. I think they're just starting to roll it out because of the Cybertruck. So with pull through charging, you're gonna need a longer cable and it doesn't matter where the port is. So like that, that was a thing. I'm sorry, I'm totally just ranting a lot about things that bother me about Tesla and their community, which I also recognize is not everyone in the Tesla community. I've had great conversations with people online who have Teslas and have been annoyed at many of the things that Tesla does because they have a perspective which is not fanboyism, it's level-headed general per general, here's what would be good for the population, etc. So this was very off the cuff. Uh, I just have some notes as far as things that I want to talk about. And apologies if it kind of went off the rails a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm personally very annoyed that uh, the rest of the industry has decided to just jump on Tesla's ship. And I also have genuine concerns about the growth of the supercharger network. Um, that, you know, I should say that's the weirder thing to me. I guess I guess they're just trying to uh, if if they're gonna uh, if they're gonna allow use of the Tesla charging network, they might as well switch to Tesla's connector because now that Tesla is gonna use uh, CCS signaling and they are opening up their chargers, there really is no legitimate reason to hold on to J1772. I'll freely admit that. Uh, the, the whole contention used to be J1772 is open, Tesla is not. And so long as we can trust Tesla to keep it open, which I guess I shouldn't have reasons. I'll have to see. We'll have to see how that goes. But so long as Tesla is being genuine and they do release patents, they, they can't sue anybody for using this connector. So long as that is genuinely the case, then if Tesla chargers start speaking the same language as CCS cars, which again, they have an incentive to do because they have to do that in Europe. So why, why have a second, you know, why make the signaling protocols different between their cars? Um, I'll be all right if J1772 is abandoned. I think it's too early to say for sure that that's gonna happen, but it's it's leaning more and more in that direction. And there will be adapters. Nobody's gonna be left stranded, except as I said, people with Leafs, but those cars can't really DC fast charge anyway. Um, and I mean like they can, but not there's almost no Chatamo chargers out there that support more than 50 kilowatts and they don't have active cooling in their battery packs. So like you wouldn't want to stress it out. And they've been kind of left in the dark for the last, again, like Nissan, what were you doing? You should have abandoned, I don't know. There have to be some tooling reasons why it was difficult to switch the leaf to CCS. But because of the whole, we don't have three phase charging here. There is no reason to have more than five pins on the connector. And these pins are not big enough for DC charging. Those are, that's what, that's Tesla's genuinely good innovation here. So yeah, if this becomes the North American charging standard, so long as there's interoperability and we can use adapters, it's not gonna bug me too much. It's because, and again, that's the other thing is that like, I can charge at home and work. And so I don't really use DC fast charging. I, I have used, I've gone on three trips in my uh, year and a half, own, uh, year and four months owning the car. And that's about as frequently as I will do a road trip. And uh, like I said, it's it's just, it's not a big deal. I, I only, I only, the only reason I have to be annoyed is ego. Um, if things go as it seems like they're gonna go, then yeah, it'll be good. We'll just see what happens. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, I'll stop recording. I'll edit this together. And if there's something I feel like I need to add, I'll just put my phone back up on that thing and add it. Uh, the laundry's almost done too, so I can throw that in the dryer. What do you know? Well, actually, I think it's almost done. It's spinning really fast now. 
But um, thanks for watching. Uh, in the end, if we, in the end, we should just have one charging port. That's the ideal thing. You don't want to carry an adapter, but I recognize that carrying an adapter is not a big deal. Um, the bigger deal actually is going to be like if you're on the road and your adapter breaks. Uh, but hopefully, you know, as this gets more, well, that is interesting. The next few years are going to be weird because if everybody jumps ship to um, J1772, or sorry, if everyone jumps ship to Max, then the number of CCS cars out there is going to be relatively frozen in time. And so maybe there's not going to be a huge market for adapters. I was going to say like, well, you just run to the nearest auto parts store and pick up another adapter, but I don't know. Maybe not, because if there's only, I don't know, half a million cars that have CCS, I don't know what the total number is. I haven't looked at the, the number. But by 2020, you know, Ford and GM aren't switching yet. So they have a whole year of production that's still going to be using CCS. And that is that is the other reason why I, I'm a little, I'm not yet ready to commit to saying this for sure is the death knell of CCS, because there is going to be a year, more than 18 months or at least 18 months of production of their cars with CCS. And GM is saying that this, you know, they're about ready. I was just listening to an interview on Marketplace with Mary Barra. She's saying that this is the year they've been kind of like what's happening with the Lyric and the Equinox EV. You know, they've announced a whole bunch of things, but Mary, is, Mary seems confident this is the year that they're going to really start ramping up production. And if it is, well, then 2024, there's going to be lots of cars with more CCS plugs. So maybe this isn't the death knell of Nax, and that is going to depend on what third-party networks decide to do between now and did i say death of Nax? i'm sorry maybe this isn't the death of ccs and that's going to depend on what third-party charging networks decide to do between now and 2025 because if a bunch more ccs stations get built out and then it starts to be the case that, well, yes, you can give your drivers access to the supercharger network with an adapter, but does it make sense to force them to use an adapter to use the CCS networks? That's still a little bit up in the air, quite honestly. So I I can't say for certain that like this is for sure. We're, we're switching to NAX. There's going to be one charger plug. Um, and we only have announcements from GM and Ford. They're big players for sure. But, you know, we still got Hyundai, Volvo, uh, Hyundai, Kia, Volvo, Volkswagen, um, uh, Mercedes, Audi, well, no, Audi's Volkswagen, right? Anyway, there's still a bunch of other people that may or may not make announcements. So, uh, nothing is certain yet, but what I am certain is if Tesla is genuinely going to start speaking CCS on all their chargers, which is as easy as swapping out some boards on the chargers themselves, then you can... So long as there's a Tesla to CCS adapter, which you just got to build those, in theory, anybody can use Tesla chargers. The question is going to be, I think, what happens between now and 2025 with other networks? If other networks start, you know, appearing, first of all, because like EVgo, EVgo's got a bunch of, um, they're actually starting to put a bunch of chargers around me, but they don't have a nationwide network. And... Um, so it very much depends on what other charging network providers decide to do. Uh, if they start putting in NACs rather than CCS, that's going to change the calculus for all the other automakers. But if they still keep going with CCS for a while, which they may still do based upon the NEVI funding, if that doesn't get updated, maybe maybe it will be the case that gm and ford will roll back their decision to install nax on their cars i don't think that's likely to be clear um, i think it's more likely that they will see the benefits of the sleeker charger um, and they're going to probably lobby to get nax approval for cc uh, for the nevi funding but i'm not you know i can see I can see both possibilities. I'm leaning pretty strongly towards CCS1 is on its way out, but I'm not ready to commit to that because, you know, I'm repeating myself, but a bunch of CCS chargers show up between now and 2025. Maybe it would be a silly move for Ford and GM to stop allowing their drivers to natively use those chargers. But uh, either way, however it pans out, if there are adapters, nobody's left in the cold. 
Um, it's just going to be a mild inconvenience for whoever needs to use an adapter. And it could be we still have these two charging networks or these two connectors um, for the next decade. And this will just be the new normal is everybody's got either their NAX to CCS adapter, which I will need, or their CCS to NAX adapter, which uh, Tesla drivers, many of them already have. So yeah. Anyway, bye, I think. Yes? Yes, goodbye.